Ellsworth Kelly attempted to find these ideas of pure painting. Again, ideas that we've seen from Mondrain, from Kandinsky, from Rothko, from other artists leading up to this point, but he believes he's going in a different direction. He will distill work down to its essential elements, producing spare elemental images. And he's going to create images that tend to be fairly minimal. And this is going to be important. Now, if I create a very simple logo, such as the Apple logo, then every line, every element of it has to be perfect. If it's wrong, it stands out. Whereas if we look at someone like Michelangelo in the Sistine Chapel ceiling, if he makes an error, if he doesn't paint a hand quite right and it's a little clumsy, it's lost amongst the 300 other figures on the ceiling. But the Apple logo, that's very different. And the Apple logo is a lot more similar to what Ellsworth Kelly is doing. If he gets something wrong, it's going to stand out massively. This is why minimalism and minimalist art, very simple art, is oftentimes viewed as far more difficult than more complex compositions, at least by the people who create it. And by the way, if you're looking at those Apple logos and you're trying to figure out which one is real, I believe you'll find this one is real. Or is it this one? Or is it this one? Huh. Tricky stuff. It's that one. But I'm just saying. It gives you that impression, that idea. You can see when it's wrong. If any of those angles, if any of those cutouts, if the leaf, if any of it is wrong, you will see it. Now, that in mind, let's move on to red, blue, green. Which is the perfect piece for an exam because... If I gave it to you on an exam, you would probably say red, green, blue, and I could mark it wrong because I'm evil. That's what professors do. Let's take a look at the work. What we see is razor sharp edges and clearly delineated forms. This piece is completely abstract and compositionally very simple. It also tends to remain resolutely two dimensional. Now, when we look at it, there are two things to focus on. There's the use of color and the use of form. Now, if we compare this to a Rothko, you'll see that his sharp edges, his very crisp lines really stand in opposition to Rothko's sort of hazy, fuzzy forms. But does that mean that we're going to interpret it any differently? I mean, they're using the same compositional ideas. They're simply looking at them and interpreting them in a different way. So speaking of interpretation, let's take a look at Kelly's work. Now, again, this is a mirror. This is going to draw out your own ideas. Maybe you focus on the blue because you're sad, you're calm. It just speaks to you that day. Maybe you focus on the red, passion, happiness, energy. Maybe the green, growth, or envy. But let's go past the colors, because now Kelly has given us definitive shapes. You'll notice the red has this very hard edge in a 90 degree angle. It gives us that sense of almost uncomfortable energy. And yet the blue has this beautiful curvilinear form that draws us around and gives us this very relaxing idea. And then the green, of course, takes on elements of both because the green, both in terms of value and uh, also emotional elements, emotional resonance, kind of plays on both sides. It can be energetic and positive. It could be sad and negative. It sort of depends how you're looking at in a given day. So Kelly is using both of those, color and form, to really inspire us to inform our emotional response to the work and again we look at in the sense of sensory deprivation after the first five seconds there's really nothing else to look at you're not going to pick out additional details but instead you're going to start seeing that mirror focused on your train of thought on your 
emotional placement in that day. And it's going to draw that forward. And so if you're particularly sad that day, it's going to come out. You're going to have that response in front of the painting. And once again, this is a large painting, which would eliminate a lot of your peripheral vision when seen from three to five feet away. It's remarkable work looking at exactly the same ideas as Rothko, but taking them in a different direction, really mixing them with artists like Mondrain and De Stiel.